Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, or truth treatment products, ingredients or formulations, something you may have read or heard about and you want clarification on, 844-236-6010 is our phone number, 844-236-6010. Likewise, if you have a success story or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844 844- 236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you want to just get your products at the wholesale price, please call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business. Start a longevity business for a one-time $25 fee. Earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business and help spread the word about how important and how powerful and how health beneficial a good nutritional supplement program can be. Call 866-735-2470, or you can sign up directly off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase your longevity products off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts, videos, all kinds of free health information, as well as the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also, would like to remind you to please check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Our retinol 5% gel made with a big dose of vitamin A in its most effective over-the-counter form, which is retinol. I formulated, and by the way, I formulate all my truth treatment products. I've been formulating skin health products now for 30 plus years. And I'll tell you something, I know a thing or two about how you make a skincare product and how you treat the skin topically. There's lots of things you can do if you know what you're doing when you're formulating a product. There's lots of things you can do to treat the skin topically, but you got to know what you're doing. And for the most part, most skincare products don't do anything to treat anybody's skin. Not a Zippo. Nothing. For the most part, I'm sorry to say this, you're wasting your money if you buy a skincare product. Unless it's got a super high dose of stabilized premium fat-soluble vitamin C, and unless it has a good dose of retinol, for the most part, your skincare products are a waste of money. Sorry to say that. They aren't going to do much. Most skincare products just work at the surface. They work at the dead cells on the surface. The very tippy top of your skin, as we've said so many times, is made up of dead cell material. It's called the stratum corneum, which is Latin for the hard layer. It's hard because it's made of a hard shell of, of a hard shell protein, similar to the kind of proteins that make up your fingernail. In essence, you have a thin layer of fingernail on the surface of your skin. That thin layer of fingernail is designed by nature to keep things from getting into the lower levels of the skin, to the lower levels of the tissue where the living cells are. In order to really have benefit from a skincare product, it's got to make it through that hard layer, through the stratum corneum, and most skincare ingredients don't do that. 
There's only a couple that will migrate through that stratum corneum and get into the lower, la lower levels of the skin where the so-called viable or living cells are, vitamin C and vitamin A. And they have to be in the right form, not the cheapo vitamin C. Not the cheapo L-ascorbic acid vitamin C. That's the cheap stuff, and it doesn't do much good. It doesn't help anybody, really, because it's sitting on the surface of the skin, sitting on the stratum corneum. You need fat soluble vitamin C, which is very difficult to work with and very expensive, and most companies don't want to mess around with it, if they even know about it. Likewise with vitamin A. If you want to get your vitamin A, if you want to get benefits from your vitamin A, it's got to be in the form of retinol or retinoic acid. And retinoic acid is pretty much the gold standard. Retinoic acid, that is, is pretty much the gold standard of topical skincare ingredients, but it requires a prescription and it's somewhat irritating. And the, the product that contains retinoic acid, it's called Retin-A, or the generic form of Retin-A, is an ugly, disgusting, awful, primitive, ignorant formulation made with parabens and sodium lauryl sulfate and propylene glycol because Johnson & Johnson is not a skincare company. They're a drug company. And they don't know how to make skincare products, even if they do know how to make drugs. So you want to use your, you want to get your vitamin A in its retinoic acid form or retinol form. Retinoic acid requires a prescription pain in the butt. Retinoic acid is incredibly overpriced, and it's aggressive, and it comes in a, a formula that's really yucky. On the other hand, if you could find a good source of retinol, high concentration, say maybe 5% retinol, in a product with no preservatives, and no fragrances, and no fillers, and no oils, and no silicon, and no sodium lauryl sulfate, and no wax, and no mineral oil, etc., you might want to consider it. Oh, where do you find that? TruthTreatments.com, and you'll get a bonus in our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, a huge old dose of vitamin C. You can use it for skin lightening, you can use it to prevent uh, uh, skin pigmentation, but also to lighten the skin once the pigmentation is already there. You can use it for, uh, to prevent or to reduce the formation of pimples, acne blemishes, and it's an awesome, awesome anti-aging, anti-wrinkle, anti-fine line product. You'll find it at truthtreatments.com with all the other truth treatment products. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We'll get to your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. We are talking iodine and its relationship to the thyroid and hypothyroidism. We'll talk a little bit about hyperthyroidism, which is also, in some ways, an iodine issue. That's when uh, the thyroid is, is too active. But hypothyroidism is much more uh, a significant health challenge. There's millions of Americans who are diagnosed as hypothyroid and many millions more who are not diagnosed as hypothyroid. hypothyroid. They used to call hypothyroidism mix edema, M-Y-X-E-D-E-M-A. Today, we just call it hypothyroidism. On our last program, we talked about how iodine is a incredibly important element. It's an activating substance in the body. The iodine molecule is, is somewhat unstable, has a certain am amount of instability, but not too much instability. It has just enough instability to make it very active. It's an activating element due to its electronic instability, and this is one of the reasons why it's such a perfect element for the thyroid, for the for thyroid hormone, which of course is an activating hormone. All the cells of the body, all 100 trillion cells in the body, sit with that number for a second. How a hundred trillion? Cells are like little tiny mini miniature animals, microscopic animals. They, they breathe, they think, they have an information processor like a brain. They've got a skeletal system, a little miniature skeleton. Can you imagine this? A, a microscopic cell, which is so small you could fit over 100 of them end-to-end -end on the head of a pin. This little microscopic, element, microscopic entity has a skeleton that keeps it in shape. It's constantly making molecules. It's constantly producing things endlessly. A cell is endlessly producing molecules. Hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions are happening per second, per second in one of these cells. And you've got 100 trillion of them that make up your body. This is just mind blowing to me. When I first got into cell chemistry and first understood cellular biochemistry, I became spiritual instantly. The idea that you have this kind of complexity in this tiny, tiny, tiny space that makes up a cell is just absolutely staggering and mind-blowing. In any case, every cell in the body is responsive to the activating element of thyroid hormone, and thyroid hormone itself is responsive to the activating uh, energies of the element iodine. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more good health information on the Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. We are back on 
one. The Bright Side Pharmacist, Ben, here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, skin health questions, questions about our truth treatment products, which you can get at truthtreatments.com. If you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, even better, start your own Longevity business, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, and we can help you do that. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more info or sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so... Iodine is an activating element. Thyroid is an activating hormone. All the cells in the body are responsive to thyroid hormone. When the body, when cells uh, uh, get a hit of thyroid hormone, so all, all our cells, every one of those hundred and trillion cells that make up the human body has a little space on the outside. It's called a receptor. It's a little opening. You could, th you could think of a, a socket in a wall, and you could think of a hormone like a plug. That's how hormones work. They act like a plug, and there's little sockets inside a cell and on the outside of a cell, and the plug, i.e. the hormone, plugs into the socket, i.e. the receptor, and, a horm and some kind of effect is initiated. With thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone's effect is to upregulate. I absolutely love that word, up regulate. When you upregulate something in the body, that means you make it happen. You increase, you increase the production of something, increase the secretion of something, increase the likelihood of something occurring. That's called upregulation. When a muscle cell is upregulated, it does more muscle things. It contracts, for example. When a nerve cell is upregulated, it nerves nerve cells. It, it, it fires off. When a heart cell is upregulated, it does more heart things. It contracts or it conducts electrical energy, whatever a heart cell does. Same with a brain cell or an immune system cell or a blood cell or a liver cell or an intestinal cell. When any of these cells are upregulated, they do more of what they're supposed to do. And thyroid hormone's action is to upregulate cells. That's what it is. It's an activating or upregulating substance. And iodine itself, the molecule that is responsible for the activity of thyroid hormone, is an upregulating activity hormone. Iodine is very reactive, as we said yesterday. That's why nascent iodine can be very helpful. Iodine is so reactive that it kind of combines with, it, with itself. It forms what are called diatoms. So one little single molecule of iodine, which is what's required to do the work, combines with other iodine atoms, and it makes it less active. This occurs when iodine is in water. Nascent iodine is a form of iodine that is monoatomic. It doesn't have two pieces until it's added to water, and that's why you've got to use your nascent iodine within a couple hours after adding it to water. As far as thyroid hormone goes, iodine is a critical component of thyroxin, i.e. thyroid hormone. T4 and T3 are the two forms of thyroid hormone. T4 has four little chunks of iodine on it, and it's weak, inactive almost. T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone, and it's created by the body stripping off a piece of iodine. It's actually not the body. It's bacteria that live in the gut that do that, and thus the unbelievable relevance of the microbiome to thyroid health. This is where the triangle of disease becomes a circle. The triangle of disease are three points of disease that underlie all health issues, the digestive system and the blood sugar system and the thyroid or the adrenal thyroid complex. These three points not only underlie all disease processes, but more relevantly, more importantly, this is where you need to be if you're going to take care of heart disease. This is where you need to be if you're going to prevent cancer. This is where you need to be if you have autoimmune problems or Alzheimer's disease or neurological issues. You've got to be at the triangle. That's the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the thyroid, or the adrenal thyroid complex. I call it the adrenal thyroid complex because it's so related to each other. But this triangle becomes a circle because the thyroid regulates the digestive system, and when you're hypothyroid, you're going to be hypodigestion which is going to cause more blood sugar problems and more problems at the thyroid level and more digestive problems and more blood sugar problems and more problems at the thyroid level. And this downward spiral of disease is where most of us are when we're sick. And our dumb medical model doesn't address this. And this is why the doctor will tell you there's no cure. And this is why he'll tell you we well, got to be on this medicine the rest of your life because he's not addressing the triangle. So I, the thyroid meets the digestive system at the level of thyroid hormone activation in the intestine. You got hypothyroid problems? Work on your gut. 
you got Hashimoto's thyroid, autoimmune disease of the thyroid, work on the gut. Get yourself on the nightly essence. Eat fermented food. Use more fiber. Use vegetable juices. These are all wonderful ways to work on gut health. The amino acid glutamine, the mineral zinc. Did you know zinc is super duper important for digestive health? Anybody ever t- Has anybody talking about this? Did your doctor tell you that without zinc, and zinc deficiency is incredibly common, you can't make hydrochloric acid, which will whack out the gut and whack out the intestine as much as anything else? Use apple cider vinegar. Use digestive enzymes with your meals. Use pancreatin, which is a wonderful digestive enzyme. You'll get that in your ultimate enzymes, uh, ultimate enzymes from longevity. Use bile salts. Use lecithin. Don't take a statin drug. Cholesterol is very important for the digestive system. If you look at the periodic table, I know everybody's got their periodic table out now probably. Just kidding. But if you do look at the periodic table, you'll see that there's a bunch of columns. And iodine is in the same column as a couple other elements. And this has a a really interesting relevance when it comes to iodine problems, iodine deficiency issues, and hypothyroidism. If you take a look at the periodic table, you'll see three elements that are very similar to iodine. They're called halogens. That's the technical name for iodine-like substances. They're called halogens. And thyroid hormone can attach itself to any of the halogens, especially when you're deficient in iodine. If you don't have enough iodine, the thyroid's going to look around for something that's close to iodine. And if it finds something, it's going to hook up to that if it doesn't have iodine. All of these high halogens are like, they're, they're look-alike molecules, and thyroid hormone can bind to them. One of these halogens is called bromine. And bromine is, according to Dr. David Brownstein, who has written extensively on the subject, one of the sneakier, more insidious causes of thyroid hormone problems, of hypothyroidism. Bromine is considered to be a hormone disruptor, an endocrine disruptor, as it's, as it's called. Like soy is a hormone disruptor, plastics are hormone disruptors. BPA, bisphenol A, which is a, a plastic additive, is a hormone disruptor. Birth control pills, they're one of the nastiest hormone disruptors. And by the way, if you're on a birth control pill, I know they're, you know, I understand that they're convenient. They control birth. And if you want to be sexually active and you don't want to deal with all the other ways of controlling birth, and birth control pills can be incredibly ha- uh, handy. But it's hard to come up with a more toxic, awful, deadly prescription medication than a birth control pill which, by the way, block thyroid hormone activity and should never be used by anyone with thyroid issues. They can cause thyroid issues, and if you have thyroid issues, they can make it worse. Birth control pills are basically high doses of fake, toxic, poisonous, cancer-causing synthetic estrogen and synthetic progesterone and should never be used by anyone, in my opinion, especially if you're concerned about cancer or the health of your breasts or the health of your ovaries and other reproductive organs health of your glands, including the thyroid. That's a, that's a story for another day, but it's hard to come up with a more awful, awful prescription drug than birth control pills. Not saying something, as handy as they are. Anyway, bromine is a hormone disruptor like birth control pills or horm- hormone disruptors. Bromine accumulates in human tissues. And because of its use as a food additive, it's snuck into foods, especially sodas, by the way, and flour as well as its use as an industrial chemical, most of us are going to have some degree of of bromine exposure, and this can cause thyroid problems. We'll continue talking about this when uh, when we come back from our break, and tomorrow on the Bright Side as we continue talking about thyroid health, iodine, and what you can do about it. A commemorative... Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. we got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side if you're interested in purchasing any of our longevity products or if you want to sign up and join the bright side ben team call 866-735-2470 that's 866-735-2470 or you can sign up right off our websites brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com you can also check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com or truth retinol five percent gel truth transdermal c balm Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. Or our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, uh, let's see here. We'll get your calls here momentarily. 844-236-6010 is our number. A couple interesting articles. This one from the journal Biologic, Biological Reviews. Parental diet affects offspring immunity. Hmm. 
A review of studies about parents' diets and the immunity of offspring has found a close relationship exists with implications for wildlife conservation. They did these tests on uh, animal offspring, and they found that uh, the diet of the mom and the diet of the dad affected how, uh, how powerful or how resilient or how responsive the offspring's immune system is. This is the science of epigenetics, folks. And this is what Dr. Wallach means when he says there's no such thing as a genetic disease. We have this idea that it's just in our genes, and if, even if you're born with cystic fibrosis or, or, or cerebral palsy, whatever genetic malady you may have, that has something to do with your genes. Folks, it doesn't have to do with your genes. It has to do with how your genes are fed in the womb. The genes get fed in the womb like any other part of the body. That is, as, an infant, as a fetus is developing inside the womb, its genetics are controlled or modified or developed in response to the kind of nutrients that the mom is ingesting. That means moms, supplement. Supplement with iodine. Supplement with your omega-3 fatty acids. Supplement with zinc. Supplement with your B-complex. You'll have a healthier baby. Nutritional supplement. And not just, it's not just nutritional supplementation, as important as that is. It can also have to do with sugar ingestion or the ingestion of food toxins. It is so, it's so vital and so incumbent upon moms to pay attention to what they're eating and what they're not eating if you want to have a healthy, strong baby. All right, from the journal Endocrinology, from uh, the Lancet, Diabetes and Endocrinology, nearly 6% of new cancers diagnosed worldwide. Some 800,000 cases were caused by diabetes and excess weight. This is another very interesting issue. Cancer is uh, the second leading cause of death in this country and around the world. Heart disease is the first leading cause of death in this country and around the world. And both cancer and Diabetes are eating issues. I'm sorry, cancer and heart disease are eating issues. They're related to blood sugar. They're related to elevated blood sugar. This is the second point on the triangle of disease. Elevated blood sugar, uh, uh, disruptions in how we handle sugar, leads to thyroid problems, which lead to digestive problems, which lead to more blood sugar problems. There's our triangle of disease. And now we know that cancer and heart disease themselves can be directly caused by changes in blood sugar or problems with blood sugar. And related to this, uh, another article, this one from the journal Nature Communications, type 2 diabetes has hepatic, that is liver, origins. Type 2 diabetes is a liver issue. The liver is a digestive structure. The liver and the intestines talk to each other, and the liver, the intestinal cells talk to the liver, and bacterial cells that live in the intestine talk to the liver. So liver health issues themselves can be caused by intestinal problems. Bingo! more triangle of disease. If you have di type 2 diabetes, you've been diagnosed as such, please understand that in addition to dealing with blood sugar, which is obviously where you got to be working on if you have diabetes or blood sugar problems, you also have to work on digestive health. All roads lead to the intestine. All roads lead to the microbiome. All health roads lead to digestive health. I know I say it every time on this program, every day on this program, but you can't say it enough because who controls our digestive system? Is it drugs? No. Is it anything the doctor can do for us? No. Is our digestive health controlled by the doctor or the medical model? No. It's lifestyle. It's how we eat. It's what we put in our mouths. And if you're not sure about the relationship between the foods you're eating and your health challenges, just stop eating for a day or two. Do a swear OV cleanse. Watch what happens. Almost all inflammatory and immune symptoms, which are involved in all health challenges, will subside when you stop eating. And I know you can't stop eating forever, but you can certainly stop eating for a day or two. And we can all certainly, including myself, restrict or limit or reduce the amount of calories that we ingest. All right, 844 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Rory in California. Good morning, Rory. Welcome to The Bright Side. Okay. Ben, thank you so much for your time and your continued education on all these critical elements of thank you. I human appreciate health that. nutrition. I appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, yeah, for don't it. yeah, don't stop discussing things like the halogens and the periodic table, all that stuff. It's uh -huh. just, over time people start picking it up and then go read up on it. Uh, good the deal. other thing that's reactive besides bromine is uh, fluorine. Absolutely, and I'm going to be talking about our, that. That's on our that's next on the agenda. You're absolutely correct, and that's a yeah, huge, yeah. huge problem. Yeah, you wonder how much that's uh, interfering with the thyroid. Absolutely. Uh, you want to hear a hidden source of fluoride? Real quick, Roy. You want to hear a hidden source of fluorine in the water aside from the stuff they add to it? Prozac. Prozac wow. in the water. 
these so-called serotonin reuptake inhibitors that we take end up, uh, we urinate them, and they end up in our water supply. It's another hidden wow. cause of, of fluorine. There you go. Another hidden cause of fluorine toxicity. And by the way, it's I, I'll talk... It's in a number of insecticides, albeit they're using them at low, you know, two ounces, yeah, three it's ounces a nerve toxin. Acre. It's right, a neurotoxin. It's, it's, it's a powerful yeah, one. It, it's interesting. Anyway, on to my question. Ringing in the ears. I've got a good friend. He's got really bad ringing in the mm. ear on one side. Mm. He's trying this, trying that, some nutrition. Yeah. I mean, there was some bioflavonoid thing. It was just some B vitamins. Some yeah, lemon they talk extract. about zinc and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, I have I have something to say on that. That's called tinnitus. And it can't, I don't yeah. have it. I don't know if, you, you know, I, I assume you don't have it either. I have a little. Very that's got to be the most, uh, it, it, you know, it doesn't, it's not like life-threatening, obviously, but it's got to drive you nuts. Yeah, to have nerve Oh my God! I cannot. Oh, I cannot imagine it. I have. A th- I had a thing on my iPhone where it it notified me every ten seconds. I got a notification, just like Bing, 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 and I was going crazy just from this Bing, Bing, Bing. I couldn't figure out how to turn yeah. the thing off. But can you imagine just having this ringing in the ear constantly? This. Bzzzing. I mean, it, no. it's got to be. No. It's got to be the most annoying, awful situation. Some people want to kill themselves, if, and I can understand and he's why. He's strong as it is. You know, What's so that? He doesn't need extra stress. Uh, well, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Here's the thing about tinnitus. Remember, there's no there's no individual diseases. They're all based in the same pathologies. the The disease process is like a highway. You may end up in different places, but the highway itself is going to is the same. You may you could take the highway to Cincinnati. You could take it to St. Louis. You could take it to Chicago. You could take it to Detroit. The road is the same. The end your your uh, your destination may be different, but the road is the same. This is how health works in the body. The path pathological highway in the body is the same, even if it takes you to tinnitus or uh, autoimmune disease or Alzheimer's disease or any other health challenge. The highway is the same. It's called the inflammatory highway, the inflammatory road. Tinnitus is an inflammatory condition like any other health challenges. Inflammation is defense. Whenever you hear that word inflammation, you're listening to it. You're hearing a defensive response. Inflammation is your friend. It's excessive inflammation that is where the problem comes from. That means you have an excessive defense response or a chronic defensive response. And the question is, is that what's causing the defensive response? Let's eliminate it. And where's that defensive response going to be coming in from? Hang tight, Rory. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open, and we're talking to Rory in California. You there, Rory? I'm here. Okay, so tinnitus, uh, you, you want, no pun intended, right? For tinnitus, right. <laughs> for tinnitus uh, you want to just consider it to be a general inflammatory condition. I know, of no, and I've been working with tinnitus patients now for decades. I've yet to see a tinnitus patient that does not have other health challenges. Nobody just wakes up in the morning, they're perfectly healthy and perfectly strong and perfectly vital, and all of a sudden they got ringing in the ears. It's associated with other health challenges because it's an inflammatory condition. When you have an inflammatory condition, it's very difficult for you to have an inflammatory condition in just one part of your body, unless you just get some kind of a, a bug bite or break a bone. Usually the inflammatory condition, when it occurs inside the body, is associated with blood toxicity. Inflammation means defense. Defense means an offending agent. The offending agent enters into the body through the blood. The uh, blood is breached or the, the blood barrier is breached through the skin if you're injecting something in through your skin, vaccines or, or drugs, I suppose. Uh, also through the digestive system. So where are you going to focus? First and foremost, if you're not a drug abuser or you haven't been recently vaccinated, work on the gut. And most yeah, of us will tired this years ago. Uh, hello, you know, the liver is a digestive structure. So right, he's got he something. He interferon and all that. I mean, he beat it. But well, you think he did, but we don't know what, ha- what kind of residual toxicity is going on in the blood from the hepatitis. We don't know what kind of toxicity was going on in his body that caused the hepatitis in the first place. So you got to go back to the gut. Have him fast for two or three days, and if his, almost certainly his tinnitus symptoms will subside. Now, most people don't want to fast, which is unfortunate because it's a great health strategy. But nonetheless, I can relate to that. I don't particularly like fasting. 
fasting for more than two or three days. I have a friend who fasts, who fasts every uh, uh, 40 days once a year, and he lifts weights, and you know, we've had him on the wow. program here, and he lifts weights while he's fasting. So anyway, wow. have him lay off a of food for a day and see what happens to his tinnitus symptoms. Or if he doesn't want to do that, have him uh, uh, notice when his tinnitus, his tinnitus symptoms flare up, when they get worse, and see if he can associate specific foods with his tinnitus symptoms. It's probably better for him to do the first option where you fast or do a swear OV cleanse and see if that helps his tinnitus symptoms. Also using digestive health strategies, including the nightly essence and uh, all the things we talked about earlier in the program, glutamine and zinc and uh, the glucogel caps, which by the way, help patch up a leaky gut. Uh, also, uh, the elimination diet where you write down everything you eat and then eliminate foods that cause digestive problems. Long story short, focus on digestive health. Now, there are supplements that you can use for tinnitus or that are suggested for tinnitus, like the B-complex, which has anti-inflammatory properties, zinc, which also has anti-inflammatory properties, uh, also uh, chromium and vanadium, perhaps. Those are used for the, body, uh, for the body to process sugar, and those all have been used to help treat tinnitus, but personally, if it was me, I would be focusing on the gut. As I say, have him lay off a food for a day or two and watch what happens to his symptoms, then eat again as normally and watch when his symptoms return and see if he can link those up to problem foods and then eliminate those foods. Thanks so much for your call, Rory. I hope I helped you Thank out. Thank you. And thanks for the kind words. Appreciate yep. those as well. Have a great day, buddy. Okay, let's move on to Shirley, who's been holding on forever. Thank you, Shirley in Pennsylvania. Appreciate it. Uh, let's get Shirley up. How you doing, Shirley? Hi. Hey, what's up? Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Thanks for holding so long. Sure. I have a what? question. I am. I have Graves' disease. I've had okay. it for four years. Okay. I'm currently only taking a Tenowal for my hypertension. Okay. They didn't want now, to poison I, your thyroid. They didn't want to give you the radioactive thyroid or, or tapazol or something. They all of that. Yeah. yeah. And I did don't let them take, take your methamazole. Yeah. Yeah, but Are you I taking quit that? that because I was hap no, no more. Okay. No All right, methimazole for the listeners is a drug that poisons the thyroid. That's one of the doctor's favorite mm -hmm. strategies is to poison different mm -hmm. parts of the... Th this alone underscores the absolute stupidity, stupidity of the medical model. Mm -hmm. And I'm being kind to doctors. I'm not going to say stupid doctors because they're not necessarily mm -hmm. stupid. They just bought into the, the uh, bought the lie, bought the meme, bought the mind virus like most of us. So I'm not going to say individual doctors, but the model is so brain dead that they think mm -hmm. that if you poison the thyroid, you're somehow going to be healthier for it. And the is the main drug that poisons the thyroid. Oh, they also think that if they radioactively destroy the thyroid, that's a good thing too. Oh, they also think if they take the thyroid out, and please, mm -hmm. uh, did they suggest that? Yank they out the, have, yes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, if you're a doctor out there, I don't know how many physicians are listening to this program. I would love you to come on the air and tell me how in God's name you can think taking somebody's thyroid out is good for them. Unless they have thyroid mm -hmm. cancer, which, by the way, it, it, rates are increasing dramatically of thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, Graves' disease for the listeners is hyperthyroidism. We've been talking hypothyroidism for a while, but uh, hyperthyroidism is a very, very unpleasant health challenge, and it can cause all kinds of issues, including high blood pressure. Um, uh, it, it also is an autoimmune disease, like hypothyroidism. It's an autoimmune issue. Did they tell you the Graves' disease is autoimmune? Yes. Okay. So what do you do when you have an autoimmune problem? The immune system is almost, in essence, synonymous with the digestive system. Not 100% because there's different satellites of the immune system spread throughout the body, in the skin, and in the lungs, and in the, uh, in the sinuses, etc. But for the most part, the headquarters of the, of the immune system, that is almost like a synonym for the immune system, is the intestine. That means when you have an autoimmune disease or any immune challenge, the first thing you got to focus on is the intestine. So, number one, Sherry, you got to have some kind of digestive issues. Chronic diarrhea is usually associated with Graves' disease, but you got to have something going on. You probably historically mm -hmm. for a while, correct? Correct. Okay, yeah, so now I'm not psychic, Ben. I'm only pharmacist, Ben. I didn't say that because <laughs> I'm a psychic. I said that because this is how the body works. 
Right. So what you what you want to do is you want to look for the foods that are causing the digestive distress. Now at this point, the intest your intestines are probably so broken down, lots of foods are going to cause digestive distress. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the more you can eliminate, the kinder it's going to be and the easier it's going to be on your intestine and the more resilient your immune system is going to be and the less autoimmune symptoms you're going to have. So do the food diary. Lay off the of foods for a couple of days. Do the Swero V cleanse where you do half a bottle of Swero V every hour and then uh, and then after two or three days, start eating one food at a time, starting with your favorite foods. Uh, keep track of your body's response to those foods. In your case, you can keep track of digestive responses like diarrhea or cramping or bloating, or you can also keep track of, of thyroid symptoms. Certain foods are going to cause your thyroid symptoms to get worse. Then you're going to lay off of those foods. Second element is you need to keep your blood sugar stable. When your blood sugar goes up, it will then go down. That's the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster we talk about all the time. High blood sugar leads to low blood sugar, but high, uh, leads to more high blood sugar, leads to more low blood sugar, etc. In between, stress hormone is going to take over, and that's going to exacerbate your, your uh, grade symptoms. So calming the body down by keeping your blood sugar stable is absolutely critical. Use more protein. Reduce your intake of fast-burning carbs, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, sugary you know, sweets, desserts, pies, fruit juice. Anything that spikes your blood sugar needs to be avoided as best as possible. Replace those mm -hmm. calories with protein, although not too much protein because protein gets turned into sugar as well as fat. You might want to consider the ketogenic diet, which is a low-calorie, low-carb, high-fat diet. You probably know what that is. That can be very helpful right. for Graves' disease symptoms. Use nutrients that help your body process sugar, chromium, vanadium, and the sweeties from longevity. Not Niacin is a, one of the all-time great brain health, thyroid health, blood sugar health, blood pressure health nutrients. Get on the ultimate niacin every day. Sip on your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Use omega-3 fatty acids. You'll find those in the ultimate EFAs. And then last but not least, calm the body down. Now, stabilizing the blood sugar will help. That'll help calm the body down. Eliminating digestive toxins will help calm the body down. But doing slow, deep breathing is a absolute must, especially when you get, uh, when the symptoms of Graves' disease kick in, when you get the high blood pressure or if you're sweating a lot, that probably is occurring, if your skin's really oily. When you start to notice that the symptoms of Graves' disease are kicking in, sit down and practice your slow, deep breathing, SDR breathing, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Slowly, meaning 10 seconds in, 12 to 15 seconds out, get an app called My, My Calm Beat or another app called Bio Breathing. Uh, both are available on through your smartphone. Bio Breathing and My Calm Beat. Practice slow, deep breathing. Always exhale a little bit more than you're inhaling. Use uh, muscle relaxation techniques, massage, yoga, stretching, meditation. Don't underestimate the power of meditation. Uh, Sh uh, Sherry and everybody out there listening, do not underestimate the health benefits of meditation. I'm not talking Buddhism. I'm not talking religion. I'm not talking sitting cross-legged on a, on a yoga Matt, I'm just talking about sitting on a couch and relaxing the body and focusing on your breathing. Just focusing on a bodily rhythm can activate the relaxation response when you're dealing with a, a Graves' disease or high blood pressure or any anxiety or any of the uh, any of the signs of an activated stress response. Sherry, I got, I'm out of time. If you have more questions, please email me, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number there and I'll call you directly. All right, apologize if I left you on hold. Call us back tomorrow and tell our call screener we left you on hold and we'll get you first up. Please check out the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, and please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. By the way, I'm going to be on George Norrie tonight for you guys who are late owls. That'll be uh, tonight, uh, 11 a.m., 11 p.m., Mountain Standard Time. People search the